Thanksgiving the key to abundant living. We are finishing strong uh, on, a, on a note of just giving thanks to our God, giving thanks to our God. Um, I, I want to encourage somebody, perhaps you, you walked into this place, you know, and you you sort of even asking yourself, you know, maybe you don't feel like it, you don't feel like expressing that praise uh, to God, but I just want to encourage you that, you know, like, like David, you know, just command your soul, just tell your soul, uh, just say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Letting us zulunga koshwa im sevens yake emiche bazalana. Because whether or not we are aware, God is always at work in our lives. That's why I always say the greatest thing that God can ever do for you is to open your eyes so that you can trace his sake in your life and see the small little things that he, he, he does each and every day. Because sometimes gulula, just to, you know, continue in life and, and life can become so normal uh, to a point of thinking that unkulunkulu agekem sebenzin. Uh, only to find that God is still at work. God is still working. Uh, we might not, you know, seeing mountains move and uh, but God is always at work in our lives. Psalm 136, Psalm 136 uh, and verse number one. Psalm 136, verse number one. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever. Amen. His mercy does what? It endures forever. So that's why we must give thanks to our God. Thanksgiving or gratitude uh, is important to God. It, this is something that God takes it very personal. Uh, I'm sure even in your life, uh, when you do uh, something for someone and you, you look at how they treat it, uh, uh, you, 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 you feel good, you know, uh, and you want to do even more for them because you look at their attitude, you look at how grateful um, they are. Uh, I was actually thinking today, uh, we were using my pen, you know, my, with my wife and jokingly I was, I was you know, bragging about that pen and, and a friend of mine bought that pen for me uh, in 2010. Uh, together with this watch that I'm that I am wearing, this was the first generation of Apple watches, and I've been wearing it ever since. And that pen that he bought for me, uh, I have kept it ever since. My pen, I refill it uh, because it's a gift that I cherish. You know, I am grateful for that gift, and that's why I'm making sure that I take good care of it. But why? Because it's it's something that somebody gave to me from the goodness of their heart, and and uh, and each time they see me wear it, I actually remind them every day. I'm like, just to show how grateful. So in the same way, even with our God, God takes you know Thanksgiving very personal. Thanksgiving to God is something that is dear, is something that is precious to us. It might feel like, you know, and to a point where we even forget to do it very often. But the Bible tells us that, you know, it is a good thing to thank God. Uh, Psalm 92 verse 1 says, it is good to give thanks to the Lord. It is something that is good. It is something that God cherishes and appreciates. And Psalm 147 verse number 1 again says, praise the Lord for it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant, it says, and praise is beautiful. Amen. That's why the Bible says God gives us that garment of praise. In other words, thanksgiving beautifies us. Your heart is not, but in other words, there is something that happens to how you look even on the outside if you are a grateful person. An ungrateful person is always grumpy. Why? Because they feel like, you know, they are entitled to more. It's like you are entitled that somebody must do something for me. And even when they do something for you, you don't even see it. You don't recognize it. You don't 
acknowledge it. Why? Because you are not satisfied. You feel like they must come back again and again and again and they do more. You are simply reserving your thanksgiving to say you need to perform more. But it is not so with our God. God looks at the attitude of our hearts. He is looking for the attitude of gratitude in such a way that he will beautify you when you come back and you say to God, God, I am grateful just for waking up early in the morning, just for, you know, the voice that I have, the eyes that I have to see, the ears that I have to, to hear, the feet that I have to walk. I am grateful to you. So when we come before God, Barcelona, with the attitude of gratitude, God, God is pleased with us. Because there is a lot that God does for us, us. But sometimes our comprehension of it, you know, it, it, it delays in such a way that we, we take time to acknowledge what God has done. But whatever it is that God does for us, each time we comprehend it, it needs to invoke thanksgiving. It needs to invoke gratitude. It needs to invoke praise from the bottom of our heart. Sometimes the gap between what God does for us and our comprehension of it, it hinders us from being grateful. It hinders us. Uh, you know, sometimes when we experience something from God, we feel like Begmelevé. You know, and, and when I open, you know, you, you know, there's a miracle. That, that's a miracle. It's a, it's a miracle. And, and, and have the appetite and have the sense of taste and be able to appreciate what you are eating. And I always say that, you know, COVID reminded us of appreciating simple things like smelling, simple things like tasting. I'm not sure if you've gone through it where, where you are eating, but you are not enjoying what you are eating, you know. You are not tasting the food. You are not smelling the perfume that you are putting on on your body. You know, it's those little things, but sometimes our failure to comprehend the things that God does for us, it causes us to fall short in as far as praise and gratitude is concerned. Are we here? Are we here, Bazalan? So the least that, we, that God is expecting from us, after he has restored us, after he has saved us, after he has built us up, after he has delivered us, after he has redeemed us, the least he is expecting from us, it is just that heart of gratitude. That is the least that God is expecting from us. There are three main ways. To give thanks to the Lord. Number one, we can do so verbally through prayers. That when we pray to God, we need to express gratitude. That's why even when we pray, Basil and I always encourage that the first thing that you and I, before we can ask, before we can prophesy, before we can declare, let's take a moment to thank God. Just thank him. Before we can ask for anything, it is good to start by thanking God. Nehemiah chapter number 17, I mean chapter number 11, verse 17, speak about, speaks about a man. It calls him Matania. You know, it says that he was a leader who began the thanksgiving with prayer. You know, in other words, expressing his thanksgiving to God through prayer. So each and every one of us, we have been given that platform that when you pray, always remember to thank God. Don't wait for God to perform any miracle in your life. Each time you have a privilege to approach the throne of grace, each time you have a privilege to wake up every morning to go to God to ask for something, the good place to start, it is thanksgiving. The, good, the first thing to do when you are going to God, it is to express thanksgiving. Even when you have not seen much that God has done, because that God does for us that are not visible to our 
our natural eye. So it will be on a safe side, approach the throne of grace with thanksgiving in your heart. Thank God for the simplest thing that you know you can ever. Thank God for the chair you are sitting on while you are praying. Thank God for the couch you are sitting on while you are praying. Thank God for the bed of Waguo. Um bed of Waguo saying just when you are going. Thank God for the clothes you are wearing. Thank God for the roof over your head. Thank God for your family. Thank God for your children. Thank God for your spouse. And secondly, we can thank God musically through songs of praise. I know some of us, we are not that gifted in as far as singing is concerned. But I strongly believe that there is a way that when God touches your life, it invokes a song of praise. It might not be a song that you have written, but somehow you can find yourself waking up early in the morning. Kunengoma, that carefully captures how you are feeling at that particular point in time. And this song will help you to express your heart of gratitude to God. Don't hold that song back. Do not keep quiet. Maulizwa, lelo hubo, lipupuma, from deep down your heart. Play it on the phone and sing along. Even though you are not good at singing, but get yourself to that place where you are just going to express your praise unto the Lord. Because the Bible says it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Find yourself kneeling down and lifting up your hands and saying, Oh, Sinyabonga, for this wonderful day that is ahead of me, I am so grateful. Just, just don't hold it back, Bazalan. Express it unto the Lord. Because even in my life from time to time, there will be moments where there's just going to be a song that is going to erupt just from nowhere. It, it can be a new song that I've been listening to, but sometimes it can be an old song. But at that moment, that song, the Spirit of God, causes it to surface from my spirit. Why? Because this song, it is just accurate for the season that I am in. It is accurate for what I am experiencing at that particular point in time. So today, I am encouraging somebody here that sometimes when you are feeling discouraged, God is not necessarily necessarily going to turn the tables upside down, but it is going to cause the song to erupt from your spirit. Do not hold it back because that song is holding a key for you that is going to take you to the place of thanksgiving. And once you begin to thank God, something is going to shift in your life. Something is going to turn around in your life. Something is going to change. I know I'm going to change your life for 40 days and 40 nights. 40 nights, but because you took time just to say thank you. Just to say thank you. And, and there's nothing that confuses the devil like that. Yeah. When you just wake up and, 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 you know, all hell has just broken loose in your life. But because that's why why because there's something that a song knows what to do in your life that you, a song can just change your mood in the morning when you are feeling down but God can just put a song in your spirit that is just going to change your mood for the day and set you on a on a place where thing you are going to look at the world differently don't hold that song back Express it to the Lord. You might not know what that song is going to shift or 12 o'clock somewhere during the day or one or, or, or three. And sometimes, sometimes when you are driving in your car and there's no one else, put that song of praise and, and just raise that volume and begin just to sing along and just be lost in the presence of the Lord. Of course, don't close your eyes. Keep, keep your eyes on the road. But of course, you know, continue to praise God and just lock yourself. Just turn your car into an altar of praise at that particular point in time. And when you are going for that job interview while you are traveling, just praise Praise God on the way. Stop being miserable. Sometimes you need a moment of just switching off the news and just turning on the song of praise so that you can just, the Bible says God comes and inhabits the praises of his people. Just use that song. Just use that song. You don't have to be vocally experienced. Uh, 
But now you want engineer shall you have the right. You have the right to be You know, uh, and Delaney with your headphones on, you have a right to be Have you have you ever you know for my headphones? Who's this man who die? Ay man, ay, 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 ay. Ay, no, 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 ay, 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 no, ay, ay. Ay, 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 no. Ay, 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 ay. Si a flow, am. Ay, no, Pastor David, si a flow, am. Si, 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 ay, ngati uzo ngkasha ngalila ngizo kuma pivi. Ay, utma uwa kip. Maso uzizwa we, no, ut. Ay, uzo ut, ay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting exposed, man. Jumon usa. But God, God enjoys it. God, you know, inhales it and has a sweet smelling aroma as long as it comes from that heart of gratitude, from, from that thankful heart that says, God, I see how you have kept me. I see how you have preserved me. I see how you have covered me. I see how you have protected me. I see how you have healed me. I see how you have sustained me, oh God. I see that even if I don't have a job, but now I did not have to suffer like the way that others are suffering. I am still standing in your presence. I am still able to go to your house. Thank you, Lord. And God is able to just come closer to you and minister to you. But the third way of giving thanks to God, it is when we couple it with our sacrificial offering. And offering, Bazalwane, is something that is given in worship. It is when we come not with empty hands, but we are we are just coming while we are praying, while we are singing. But we are saying to God, God, even with our substance, we just want to show you how grateful we are, Barcelona, because some of us at this present moment, because of what we have gone through and what the church has gone through, we have forgotten about the power of an offering, particularly a sacrificial offering, where you are saying to God, God, today I'm not just going to honor you with my lips but I'm going to honor you with my substance where we realize that when we bring that kind of an offering it is not just a donation to God it is not a donation to the church but it is an offering to God something given in worship this is something that you know when I bring before the Lord God receives it as an as an as an offering he receives it as worship that when God you know puts it before him he puts it as a memorial that in times when I don't even know what to pray and how to pray to the Lord. The Bible says that offering is going to speak on my behalf in the presence of the Lord because there's going to be seasons and times where you don't even feel like praying, where you don't even know where to start. But the seeds that you keep on sowing, the Bible says they are going to stand as a memorial before the presence of the Lord. That's why I love Psalm 20 so much. The psalmist prays, he says, that God may remember your offerings and your sacrifices. Because once you are bringing a substance before God, you are setting him up. There are certain offerings that you are going to give where the Bible says, even when Moses was giving, the Bible says the seeds on his loins were, 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 were just, he was just giving that seed in advance so that his seed will also benefit Abraham, the same thing. So that God will just go after your kids. Not because of what they have done, but because of your offerings. God had no business running after Solomon. I can do Solomon. I pressurized to come and ask him. And I love the fact that Solomon recognized it. Because when God said, what can I do for you? He did not start with a long list of prayer items. No. He did not start with that long list. He started with his father. Realizing that there are things that his father has done. We, we remember how David sometimes will say, Nkosi, 
even everything that I have, I don't have enough that I can say I am giving to you because it comes from you. That's a man who knows and understands. It is supposed to honor God together with me. Whether it be my children, whether it be my cars, whether it be my house, whether it be my clothes, whether it be, you know, any form of substance that I have, it needs to help me to thank God. And once we do that, the Bible shows us that there's going to be rewards in doing so. There's going to be things that heavens are going to shift simply because, you know, Little, little, little by Billy Cain killed Abel. Why? Both of them had a chance to bring an offering before the Lord. Both of them. But Abel realizes that when I am giving, I am not donating. And in favor. Abel realizes that this is a moment that I cannot afford to just let it pass by me. I'm going to use it. And I'm going to use it effectively. And Cain loses his moment. And the offering that Abel gave catches God's attention. And God looks at him differently. And here's what I like about God. You see, if there's one person I know, you see, sometimes we feel so entitled as the children of God that when God does not do things our way, we feel like we can twist his arm by sulking. Because we are trying to get his attention. God closes in on him. Okay. He says, why are you angry? He says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? In other words, you know we ask. You have an opportunity I was going to look at you the same way. Nobody stopped you from doing the same thing that your brother did. There's no need for you to hate on him. And God makes it very clear. In other words, he was simply saying, I'm not going to change because now I'm going to Because many of us, instead of fasting, instead of praying, Instead of giving, we sulk. Because we think God. You see, you can do. And the more you sulk, the more he ignores you. Because, little by pile, magnendo unkunukulu angazwan nayo. Inclusio, that is full of complaints. And some of us, when God creates such opportunities that you can come, you see, are you going to him now? The Jengo was a son to any one of you. In other words, no more mele, who's who's kumbuze now, um kumbuze and uncle and look at a shaven of fun, but because you are God, I, I commanded my soul, bless the Lord. Oh my soul. Who's the Uzi Davide in another psalm? Ukuluma no perfum loa. Uti, why are you disquieted within me? He says, Rejoice in the Lord. In other words, Ukuluma no overloa. Uti, this is not the time to sulk. It's not the time to be sad. It's not the time to be ungrateful. It's not the time to be upset. It's not the time to question God. This is not the time to question God. But it's time to express praise time to express gratitude to God. In other words, we are not going to waste a time. Because coming, that's why little by Billy, it's a privilege to be invited by God to come into his presence. 
In other words, agona ukuthi siyazenzela it's a privilege. The Bible says those who are invited by him. It says blessed are those. So whenever I get that opportunity to enter into the presence of God, in other words my soul can be thinking about all sorts of things that has been happening all throughout the week, but I will be commanding my soul. I will be saying to my soul, this is not the time to re- to remember the disappointments of Wednesday, the hurts of Tuesday. This is not the time to remember everything else that everyone else has done in my life, but it is to remember the goodness of the Lord. In other words, from Monday, that God has been busy with in my life. On Tuesday, some of those, but God, I need to always convince myself there is something that God is putting together for me. There is something that God is working on. There's another project. I might not be seeing the results now. I need to tell myself, the Bible says he daily loads us with benefits. That's why even Jesus, when he was talking to the disciples, he said, Man tandas tandas, I need to give us this day, this day, our, our daily bread. Why? Because he knows who to each and every day there is provision that comes from heaven. There's revelation that comes from heaven. There is something that God is always cooking. That's why this is all the time just say thank you just say thank you jesus because when you thank god number one it will magnify god in your life thanksgiving does what it magnifies god the bible says magnify him through thanksgiving what happens in other words longkulunkulu that other people are not seeing you know empiloniaco from outside longkulunkulu that you are always talking about and it seems as if people are not seeing him when the more you give him thanks it is the more afunukbonagala through you it is the more as when zuguti trouble zako they are not going to ask and say where is your god in other words, this is when God begins to be more visible in your life. This is when God begins to show up in Pilaniaco so that even you yourself, you are not going to from time to time ask and say, where are you, God? Just, just provoke him each and every day and say, God, I thank you for what you have done in my life. I thank you for what you are doing today, but I also thank you for what you are working on, what I am not yet seeing in my life. Lord, I thank you in my life because the more you thank him, it is the more because unkulunkulu uya thanda ukuvela lakhulu nywa ngaye khona awa ngizo awa ngizo the disciples after u Jesus esheshonile resurrected they they are not aware but they start talking about him they start talking about him and Jesus at that point was looking for a place where he can start to reveal himself but he finds these two are talking about him and he shows up and when they were talking about him they are not realizing the Bible says their hearts began to burn why? because each time you are going to talk about God when you are sitting with your friends and you are beginning to tell them that you know what I thank God that in this coming year yeah, yes what I am expecting from him you have not yet seen it but you are talking about it you are talking about you are, you are just expressing your thanksgiving in advance and when you do so he shows up. He says, Nagula, take note. Because God is always concerned about that. That when I do something for you, will you tell people? Will you tell people? That's all that God is concerned about. When I do something for you, Will you tell people? You see, if you want God to show up in your life and show off in you, just, just, there's I'm so refreshed. You know, even with my job, I just thank God. The more you do that, God realizes that, you know, this one, when I do something for this person, other people will know 
I always say this. You make sure you go to the Satan. Satan is a fool. What is it? You are not going to be able to do That's why I remind you. I don't want to be able to do it. But God, He wants His glory. He says, My glory I will not share with any other. In other words, when I do something for you, let the people know it's God. It's Jehovah who has done it. He, he wants all, not some of it, all of the glory. He wants it. When we begin to take away His glory, I'll tell you more. You talk about your affordability first before you mention God. You see, some of us, you will grow to a level where you realize with your credit record sometimes will not get you the things that you are looking for. There, there will be a time where you realize that the kind of house that you want to stay in your credit record is not enough. Your income is not enough. You need God who knows how to override systems. You, 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 you need God who will embarrass you in such a way that now born with it, so born again, la with it. Nyashaya, mangat nyai explain alendo with me tolegan jani. But I born with no, no, no. I shangan it into because that they say must not see a check. You are not ticking all the boxes. But it was just God who stepped in and was able to over override everything that was saying no to you because there will be a season in your life where there are things that are saying no to you, where doors are shut in front of your face. But God. But God will step in and say, this one will give me the glory. I, I want to be magnified through their thanksgiving. Where you understand, Uti, as a student, I want to become a doctor. But I can't was a woman. This is good. I can't even the NFs as I might not even qualify for it. And God will say, yeah, no, but don't put a full stop yet. Just put, a, just put a comma and give me a moment so that I can step in and show you that I am the God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above you can ever ask or think. Thanksgiving will do what? It will magnify God in your life. The Bible says the nations will call you blessed. You see, this is where <laughs> it's written all over you. Footing it under a cool family because my was. They know your record. They know all your faults. They know all your mistakes. They know all the things that happened to you. They know our nicknames. They know how to, they remember even how they used to bully you. They, they know, they always looked down on you. But upon your life, when that D28 phenomenon is upon you, as you walk in, they will call you blessed. Why? Because God has found a place to magnify himself. It's for you to decrease so that he may increase. Many of us, we are too big. We are too big. We are pointing everything towards us. Let us decrease and give God room and space for him to show off. You know, when I studied the word glory, this is what I discovered. It involves embarrassment. Embarrassment. Here's what it means. It means sometimes through the things that God does for you that you cannot do for yourself, they be, 
they become so much of an, an, an embarrassment in your life. So that even when, even if you try, we let go a land. Back to you, no. I will let you. See, I no, no, no. You cannot pull this off. As a matter of fact, to a point where now, when you are alone, you are not going to help it. You are going to kneel down and say, God, hi, Lord, I thank you. You, 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 you know now, one-on-one, good -on -one, I, I, I'm not that smart. I'm not that great. I'm not that big. I'm not that blessed. I'm not that gifted. I'm not that anointed. I'm not that wise. I'm not that intelligent. How did this happen? This is when God wants all the glory for himself. You know, sometimes, and here's, here's, the, here's the problem, Pastor Dean. You know, in the ministry, when people see your church thrive, but not all of them with the same motive. All that they are looking for is for you to give them a formula. And when you say to them, it's God. But they think, and, and, and they don't understand, on my own. There are things that I cannot explain about this church. It's embarrassing me because now it, it, it says to me, there's something right that, that I am doing. But now I mustn't kill anyone. You, you can say, hey, the last one, hey, they are cool about your vanilla. Bang, chela la baba vanilla, I pastor this. You know, ham, but you vanilla, ne? See, vanilla, but sin this one band. Let go, Alice, on to Sunday. Our mind says, And sometimes we just wanted to come to church. I'm like, wow. This is when God says, It's not your efforts. I acknowledge your efforts. But I am not limited by your efforts. My, my blessing in, 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 in your life and, and how I want to increase you is not all that I am looking for is a grateful heart. Not if I, if I can find a vessel through which my name can be glorified. And just choose, I'm not going to take credit for anything. I pray this morning that God will be magnified through your life. I pray this morning that even as we are coming to say thank you to God, I pray and I declare in your life that as from today, may God be magnified. May God arise in and through your life. I pray that may God through your life, in your calling, in your business, in your career. May people see and trace the hand of God in your life. And number two, time I'm closing Thanksgiving gives us access into his presence I love this one when you are a grateful person the Bible says let us enter into his gates with what with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. But but here's what I love. Because sometimes we take this thing for granted. And we think getting into the presence of God is an obvious thing. Listen to what the message translation says in Psalm 100 and verse 4. The very same scripture that, en that says enter into his gates with thanksgiving. It says enter with the password. Thank you. It says enter with the password, thank you. In other words, gates into the presence of God are always locked with the passcode. And the only way to unlock those doors, thank you. Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. 
Lord, I thank you for my life. I thank you for my salvation. I thank you for my children. I thank you for my family. I thank you for the roof over my head. The more you do that, God gives you the, he punches in the combination. And the more you do that, the gates into his presence. And you are saying to me, you know what? What do I need from the presence of the Lord? The Bible says in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. In other words, when you have access into the presence of the Lord, God begins to give you the kind of joy that you can never be able to give to yourself. The kind of joy that your car can never give you. The kind of joy that your house can never give you. The kind of joy that your salary cannot be able to give you. But God gives you not just joy, but the fullness of joy. In other words, God will begin to cause you to be so grateful each and every day. Each and every day. And they will want to know what has happened in your life. And you are just going to say, I'm just enjoying the presence of the Lord upon my life. You are just going to be this person who is full of joy. There are many marriages, Barcelona, today that are destroyed because of the lack of joy. Say tengi we moto, say aki we inlu, say we a financial breakthrough. There's no joy. Saka bangu timshambe, we need a promotion yama corner. The promotion there's no joy. Why? Because the presence of God is not an obvious thing. It's not automatical. Would because umzalwan. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord. There are times of refreshing. This is when God gives you rest for your soul. It's utinu chesu. Izanegi mi nina nonke enkatele nensindo ayo, he says. He says, nya unpumuza. The English translation says, I'll give you rest for your soul. What does that mean? There are seasons in your life. Uzizu katele. Ukamanguti, I just need to sleep. Have you ever been in a season in your life where you feel like at least for three days? Because you think and you're going to feel better. Only God can give you rest. For, and he says it is in his presence. That you wake up early in the morning. Not even feeling like going to church. Not even feeling like talking to anybody. Not even feeling like lifting a finger. Have you ever decided? This next week, I'm not going to talk to anybody. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to work. I'm not, I'm not even, I don't want to be bothered. Why? You're tired. You're tired. But when God gives you access into his presence, the Bible says there are times of refreshing that you don't understand all you did was just to be given access. Remember, access is not coming to church. Access into his presence is not coming to church. There are people who walk in as on to any walk out still tired. Because it is not walking into a building that is going to give you rest for your soul, but it is access that requires the passcode of gratitude. Thanksgiving, where God says, I'm just going to show you what you can experience in my presence. Times of refreshing, where the Bible says, those wait upon the Lord. They shall walk and not be faint. They shall run and not be weary. But the Bible says, they shall receive strength, it says. But it's, I love it because it makes an example of an eagle. Because an eagle does not necessarily become great in flying because of its ability to flap the wings. The eagle, Bazalwane, especially in that time, there is, a, I'm not sure if you are aware, every eagle, there's a season where it is just going to lose the feathers. And the more it does that, it, it loses the ability to fly effectively. 
and, 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 and you know, even in the Bible, it describes it in this way. It, it talks about how it will hide itself. And the eagle will even to, to go through a time where it will keep an hour sailing. And the Bible says, my keeper, the, the, the wings are able to excrete oil. <laughs> it excretes oil so that then it will gradually rub on itself. And these wings will grow back gradually, but it will not go out immediately. Why? Because it has not been flying for a while. But it will wait for a moment. Listen, it will wait for a storm. The Bible says, because we all know, Barcelona, it has a, 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 a claws that are so sharp. It, it will position itself on a rock and hold on to this rock. And the storm will come. The very same storm that others are running away from. But it, will, it is just going to wait in anticipation. And just open those wings. And guess what? When it lets go. Oh my goodness, it takes advantage of the wind that is going to blow beneath its wings. And all that it does, that's why it says it will mount up with wings as eagles. And that is when the spirit of the living God simply blows in your life. And you know that you are moving forward, not because of your strength. You are moving forward, not because of your skill. You are moving forward, not because of your ability, not because of your gift, but there is wind beneath the wings that is carrying you each and every day. That tomorrow you are going to wake up and go to work. It is not because of your ability and your strength, but it is because we are all carried by his presence and it is only found in his presence. Enter into his gates. With thanksgiving. What does it mean? If I lose gratitude, I lose access into his presence. That's why even as a church, we cannot afford. That's why we do this every year, Bazalane, to pause and say, God, we have been using strength all throughout this year. You have sent us to different places. But in this season, like eagles, we choose to pause. We choose to hide ourselves. We choose to wrap that oil on our wings. And we will wait on you to blow again. And when you blow again, oh God, we shall mount up with wings as eagles. Siabonga. 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 For one more soul that was added. Siabonga. For one more member that was added to the church. Siabonga. For one more rent that was offered. Siabonga. For one more desk that was bought, Siabonga. One more piece of equipment, Siabonga. Oh God, we are so grateful that we have this house to come, Sizokonza, Kukonabanye, who do not have this, Siabonga. We are so grateful. Why are we doing that, Bazalan? So that we don't just come to church and have a service for the sake of a program, a service that lacks His presence. Because it is only when the presence of God is made manifest that we can be refreshed, that we can be renewed. Number three, thanksgiving validates our prayers. The Bible says in Philippians chapter number four, verse six, be anxious for nothing. Many of us, there are things that we are praying for, believing God for. Many things, let me even take it further and say, many things that we have been praying for all throughout this year. And we are at a place where we think, I might as well pray for something else. And others, we have given up. We thought, maybe, look, tandas are accidents. I don't know, Bazalan, have you ever prayed for something so much that you did not decide to stop, but you just realized, what? you know what? <laughs> and you got to a point where you accepted and you even said to God, God, I'm not going to be upset. Even if you don't do it, I'm okay. I'm good. 
and you found yourself and gradually we call I don't know at the end of the year have you ever realized that I have to write down and I have to write I write down and I am so fervent and I was praying for these things but because sometimes prayer requires travailing you get so tired and you accept you know you know what it's okay you go back to all of those things and you look at the list and you're like, oh my God. I had these things in my prayer list. And you're saying it's godly. And of course, sometimes God, by his grace, he fulfills the others. But there's something and, and remember, in most cases, an answered prayers intensifies anxiety. Because somewhere at the back of your mind, you still want that thing. It's just that was fundise uguba nam towards its necessity in your life. And you begin to convince yourself, Ugoti. You know what? Go right. No man, I'm going to phone. I can write my pan the why. But it's all good. God did not say, I'm not going to do it for you. He's still going to do it. But, but there's a key that God has given us that has a way of reviving such prayers and validating them. Because let me tell you, we normally say, your dreams are valid, ne? Let me, t- let me take it to this level. Your prayers are valid. The fact that they delayed, it does not mean they are not valid. They are still valid. Amen. They are still in the presence of the Lord. They are still Oshwin Nilgankulungul. As a matter of fact, some of them have been answered. And the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. I'm here just to encourage you. But don't waste any more time by allowing yourself to be anxious about things as in yet in your life. Let me even take you to the level of saying, don't even be too or overly desperate about those things. God is still going to do it. Listen. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, not some, everything, by prayer and supplication. What is supplication? It is petitioning God. As a petition, Abantu Maba Macha, Naikosatu, Ia Macha, Basuge Benzan, Basuge Bahama, Nane, Ne petition. In a list of their demands to those who are in authority and they are simply saying do something about this so God receives petitions I'm challenging you today to have a petition somewhere in your diary in your phone agubene zinto in the presence of the Lord. Because I'm about to give you a key that will validate those petitions. Ibanendo, also, no munga ibonanga, unga iki pelistin, wabanaga yenzeganga this year. Ay, unga iki pelistin because I yenzeganga for the past three years. Oh, is it tatanja nungulungul? God answers on time. Not in our time. On time. Ungam faleli. Kule 12 months young or 2022. Your prayers are valid. Your petitions are still valid in the presence of the Lord. Take note. He says, but in everything by prayer and supplication. And then he says, with thanksgiving. 
So Thanksgiving has a way of reminding you. Thank you for my car. And let us cut us a And it's all we it as a petition. Lord, I thank you for my marriage. Thank you for a good husband. And let us single. But Lord, I thank you for, for that good wife. I thank you for that good husband. I thank you, Lord, for a good marriage, a good family. But the more you thank God, it validates your prayer. In other words, you are saying to yourself, I'm still expecting it. Not only to hear, but to answer. It's just that sometimes we don't give him time to answer. Because Sifuna Um Valela to a twelve months or a six months or a three months. I want to say to you today, young people so we caught you this year, even I'm carry over while last year. As you thank God, may the Spirit of God remind you of the petitions you have forgotten. Petitions that you have, you know, said to yourself, you know, me right in a pandy one. Who's a portal in our nine? What I mean, I said, right, Ganjan. Sing a shoe like Lizzie. Unama. Yawana emo to in a leg stop. We are eating. Ushimot. Emoto accessing into your prayer. So as we thank God today, it is my prayer that God will remind you of things that Yena is still committed to. It's just that when I saw his call you, it's just that when I Ourselves expect because expectation is that magnet that reaches out for a miracle. Let me let me really really I'm closing with this one. I was supposed to give you seven, but I'm closing with this one. So Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving does what? There are many of us who are sitting here. We've seen God move in our lives in ways that we have never seen before. But we reached stages where we, all, because you see, Mauge, why born a miracle before? Masakfanili Pindeg. Your mind can easily block the flow of that miracle. Why? Because you want to preempt how God is going to perform because your point of reference is how he did it before. I'm going to say it one more time. Sometimes because Moses Moses, by all my bandon about Israel, what does he do? He takes the rock, the, the rod, strikes the rock, puma mans, at the instruction of God, first miracle. Second time around, similar need, because he has seen this before, he preempts. He thinks God is going to do it the same way. But this time around, God says, speak to the rock. He strikes the rock. When you are faced with a similar thing that requires the same, it's like you've seen God give you a job before. And Baba Kona is in a certain way. That led you to you having that job. You find yourself, you don't have a job, you need another one. Your point of reference is the previous miracle. <laughs> And then goes wild. 
and it blocks the flow of the miracle. Here's what I like about Jesus. Jesus raised quite a few people from the dead. Then he gets to Lazarus. Listen to what he says. Four days before. I'm the resurrection and the, and the life. But no, he has is a figure resurrection. To cut the long story short, it was in Bonisani Same problem. He needs the same miracle. But how does he start? Lord, I thank you. In other words, I'm not going to assume but when we are in Israel. And I think at that time he receives a revelation of how is this one going to happen. During Thanksgiving. And there are many of us where we, we, we are stuck somewhere where we know only a miracle is going to produce what I'm looking for here. Only a miracle is going to activate a breakthrough here. Only a miracle will turn this situation around. It's just that you've been grappling with the how part of it. And all the time, God always says, leave the how to me. But sometimes we just want to run ahead of You see, even here at Builders Church, we are, we are facing a similar problem. Pastor D, we've seen how God provided this building. We've seen how God provided even the one we are using, even though we are renting it, but we are sensing we need another miracle for a building. But what is messing us up is the how part of it. Because we've seen how he did it here. We've seen how manje sitlako ngesho masithi okay as fune nesu enye so render in the meantime kuba history me geograph. And we are faced with problems that we did not face with the first miracle. But I am sensing that even as today we are saying God thank you. Thank you for this building. Thank you for how you have provided for other buildings. Thank you Lord. Thank you for I sense that as we are giving thanks God is going to reveal the how part of it. I believe that we are going to walk out of this service with the how part of it. And I pray the same even for you sitting down listening to me. I don't know in what area of your life where you need another miracle. I don't know. Maybe you are looking for another job. Maybe you are looking for a promotion. Maybe you are looking for just a breakthrough in your business. But I sense that even as you are lifting up your hands, as we stand up on our feet, just in thanksgiving as you are bringing your seat, just to say, God, I thank you. I sense that the windows of heaven are going to be opened like the prophet and the, you are going to see the visions of God. God will show you your next breakthrough. God will show you your next open door. God is going to show you your next job, your next assignment. God is going to show you your next financial fortune. And it is my prayer that whatever point of reference you have, concerning the previous miracle that God performed in your life, whatever point of reference that you have whatever point of reference you have whatever point of reference right now I pull down strongholds I cast out imaginations each and every argument everything that may try to raise itself above the will and the knowledge of God I pull it down now in the name of Jesus Christ and may the heavens be opened over your life. And may God give you a divine strategy. May God show you a, a door that he has already opened. May God order your steps right now. May God lead you to that right place, to that right person that you are supposed to speak to. May God give you a revelation of who to talk to, of who to call. May God send you to the right place in the name of Jesus Christ. I sense that some of you, that your, your miracle is going to locate you. Your miracle is going to come to you. 
you perhaps in the previous miracle you went out and looked for that miracle but this time around God says I'm going to come to you I'm going to visit you I'm, I, I, I am going to come I'm going to come and maybe like the the sisters of Lazarus you are saying Jesus I was expecting you in June I was expecting you in July when I was really desperate before my car was repossessed I was expecting you to step in listen God is never too late the Bible says he makes all things to be beautiful in his time in the appointed time let us just lift up our hands and just take 30 seconds just in your own words and in your own way begin to thank God in this place just express your gratitude just thank him right now in the name of Jesus Christ for what he has done for what you are still believing him for may your thanksgiving usher you into his presence may you be refreshed in the name of Jesus Christ may joy fill your heart right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ repalo retise lipando zeliba proteso zeliba Babrocato zeti lel panote zula rel paneteske jise te kel parota repla groteske jise may your thanksgiving even begin to validate your prayers right now every petition that you have given up on every petition that you have forgotten every petition that you have given up on right now may the spirit of God bring it back to remembrance in the name of Jesus Christ reto sita le prato salo repelo tise Celebrato salo, rete celebre que telpa, rete celebra cotesco. Father, thank you for open doors. Thank you for job opportunities. Thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Master. Financial breakthroughs, Lord. Financial doors in the name of Jesus Christ, oh Father. Promotions, oh Master. Business breakthroughs, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Replagro tesuta. Replagre tasso. Celebrato zete kereta. Replagre deske jizete. Replagre tasso. Zel pano teso, zel pene tese, zele preto zite, rete zike tere, replagro descoje, zete rete zite, zete rite zete re, replegre deske jezete kerpe, replegro desco, jezete kerpa, rete zite rete, zete rete zike te, replegre deske, jezete kerete, replegre deske, zete rete zike, replagro descoje, zete rete zike te, replagro te, replagro te, Plagrote, replagrote, be magnified in our lives, oh God. Be magnified in our families, oh God. Be magnified in our marriages. Be magnified, oh God, in our callings. Be magnified, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, be exalted, oh Father. Be exalted, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Even as we come, not empty handed. But as we come with our thanksgiving offering, Father, we thank you that it shall stand as a memorial before you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, for, O oh God, through it we are expressing our honor. We are expressing our gratitude, O oh God. We are expressing our thanksgiving. Thanking you for, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, even for those things which are yet still to come. In the name of Jesus Christ, for we know that you are the God who does great and mighty things. In the name of Jesus, therefore, I pray this morning, oh God, that miracles will be activated in this room. That miracles will be released, oh Father, in this room. That every family, every life, every business, every career, oh God, represented in this room will experience a miracle, O oh God, today in the name of Jesus Christ. Do those things, O oh Father, that we cannot do for ourselves. Do for us, O oh God, what we cannot do for ourselves. Open up wombs. Open up doors. Open up opportunities, O oh Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, supply and meet needs. Heal sick bodies, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Show us the way that we should follow. 
order our steps. Lead us to our destiny and calling and assignment. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh God, I pray for miracles of increase and multiplication. Just like when Jesus gave thanks and the bread began to multiply in his hands and in the hands of the disciples. Father, as we give thanks this morning, I pray for the miracle of increase, a miracle of multiplication. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, perfect that which concerns us. Make us whole. Make our marriages whole. Make our families whole. Make our finances whole, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Siabonga Nkulu Nkulu Wetu. Siabonga Nkulu Nkulu Wetu. Siabonga Nkulu Nkulu Wetu.